Studio Lab Pro is the only application that includes a seamless drum engine, an audio sampler, and a recording studio, all of which are accessible from the screen in front of you, the home screen. The home screen is essentially an intermediary between all aspects of Studio Lab Pro. For example, you can record a sample in the studio, trim and change the pitch of that sample in the sampler, and then use the sample in the sequencer to make your beat. So let's start by exploring the sequencer, the beat button. The sequencer consists of six tracks of 16 pads, meaning each pad is 1 16th of a bar in a 4-4 time signature. However, this does not mean you're limited to such a grid. By holding a pad down and dragging it to the right allows the user to move the pad off the grid into a triplet, for example. You can also drag a pad down to lower the individual volume of that pad. I think the best way for me to explain the functionalities here is to create a beat from scratch. Let's start by making a project. You can select any tempo ranging from 50 to 200. The sequencer can loop up to four bars. You can change how many loops you would like at the top labeled bars. Use the two arrows at the top to navigate through each bar. The number in the bottom right shows you what page slash bar you are on. Four bars may seem limited for making a full song, but the sequencer also allows for live automation. We'll get to this in a minute. Now let's adjust some of the properties of our drums and samples. To the left, you can adjust the volume of each track. To the right, the properties. The mono property stops playing the sound assigned to a pad when the next pad plays. For example, with our hi-hats on the second track, as the next hi-hat plays, the hi-hat sound before it will be ended. The poly property is just the opposite. A selected pad will play its sound over the next selected pad in the sequence. The gate property is the coolest and is very useful when dealing with samples. One tap on a pad using the gate property results in a green lit pad which will start playing the audio. Two taps on a pad after will result in a red pad ending playback. The sync button in the top right is very important. It allows you to import your own audio, export your current sequence, or bounce your current sequence to your sound bank. Your sound bank is shared between all portions of the application. Therefore, bouncing to your bank is particularly useful when creating full songs. Bouncing in the sequencer is also a way to add an infinite amount of tracks to your beat. For example, when you run out of tracks, just bounce that project, create a new project, and use the bounce audio on the first pad. After that, you can add five more tracks to your beat.
Now that your beat is finalized, you can select the sync button to bounce it to your bank for use in the studio. This is where we can record live automation. As the sequence is recording, press the hide button and select the properties tab to adjust your beat as see fit. The sequence is still recording as you adjust the properties. The sampler is used to manipulate and truncate audio. Many features including looping, pitch shifting, truncating, and granule scratching make the sampler an essential tool in beat or instrumental production. You will notice cue points throughout the audio in the form of small white lines. They are assigned automatically from peaks in the audio. You can use the cue button in the bottom left to move these cue points to any point in the audio. Playback is triggered from these points when the user selects that area. This gives the sampler an easy touch play interface, which is very fun in sample manipulation. The loop button at the bottom assigns a seamless loop after the next two touches of the audio. The record button records live automations and saves them to your sound bank. The metronome button at the top will turn the metronome on at the selected tempo to help time your chopped samples or drums. The sync button in the upper right is used to establish a wireless connection for importation of your own audio. In the studio, like all other parts of the application, your sound bank is present. However, your sound bank in the studio only stores audio longer than 27 seconds to keep things neat. This is best because the only audio needed in the studio are instrumentals, like those made in the sequencer. This is the audio we bounced to the sound bank from the sequencer earlier in the video. The studio is good for two main purposes. One, to record a song over an instrumental, and two, to record a sample for use in the sequencer. Let's start by recording a song. This is the mixer screen. It consists of one instrumental track and four audio tracks. Right now, all tracks are empty. We can begin recording by arming a track and then selecting the main record button. Boss floating high, you can watch my shit parasail. Long bread stretching everywhere parallel. We can add backing tracks or ad libs by recording on other tracks. Select the lyrics pad button in the bottom right to write your lyrics. Use the green silence button to silence a track and the X button to delete a track. If you need more than four tracks to create your song, don't worry. All you have to do is bounce this current project to your sound bank using the sync button in the top right. Then you can record over the bounced file in a new project. Your sound bank is where all your audio is stored. Bouncing files to your sound bank allows you to make complete productions using all parts of Studio Lab Pro. For example, this is how you can record a sample. Enter the studio, select record a sample for your instrumental, name your project, and record whatever you'd like to sample. At last my love has come along. After you're done recording, you can stack your sample, add ad-libs on backing tracks, or adjust the volume. And now bounce your sample to your sound bank which will share what you just recorded with other parts of Studio Lab Pro, including the sampler and the sequencer. 
First, I'm going to enter the sampler to trim the sample. At last, my love has come along. Like I said before, we can move the cue points wherever we want within the audio. We can find the spot where we want to record the sample and then press record to truncate it. This will save the file to our sound bank. Now let's enter the sequencer to add this file to our beat. To recap, Studio Lab Pro uses three different methods of music production. The studio, the sequencer, and the sampler. There's no specific order to use them, but experiment and play around for your ideal method of production. The share button allows you to upload anything in your sound bank to your Crassity.com profile. It does this through SoundCloud. Just hit the upload button and you're ready to go. The song you uploaded is now accessible in your profile.